Boom! We are live for a new episode of the Electric Podcast. I'm Fred Lambert, your host, and I'm joined by Seth Wintraum. How are you today, Seth? I'm good, Fred. All right. Uh, big thanks this week to Electrify America for sponsoring this episode of the Electric Podcast. We're going to talk about them more later on on the show. Stay tuned for that. But now let's dive into the news of the week. And um, for the first part, it's going to all revolve around uh, Elon's visit to uh, Germany. So he, he announced that last weekend, saying that uh, he, uh, he's going to do a quick trip to Germany this week to for, for a bunch of different projects, uh, seemingly all related to Tesla. And um, at first he said, but but also this weird project that we started learning about earlier this year, this year where Tesla is involved in this like RNA vaccine print, printer um, system. So it's uh, it's CureVac, it's a German Germany based company that is playing with RNA, which is like a sister molecule to to DNA, and they're trying to, I mean, obviously I'm not a <laughs> biologist or anything like that, but uh, they are trying to uh, basically code rna to 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 fix diseases um and use that as a vaccine and when we first heard of that we were like all right so tesla somehow started working with them due to the pandemic and whatnot but actually it has nothing to do with that they were already working with curevac prior to that um to, to the the covid19 pandemic and uh, last year they applied for a patent um for the actual machine to print the rna for uh, for the vaccine so and it, it was related they were working on, on on another flu vaccine so not on the COVID. Well, obviously the covid 19 wasn't around back then but since the pandemic curevac sort such of shifted their focus to covid 19 and now they're already in, cl in clinical trial for for their for their uh, vaccine so um while they're doing that tesla is focused on the manufacturing part of it and the, the machine to to deploy those vaccines and elon referred to them as mini factories but um, most people are talking about like a sort of a rna printer they say and um, yeah so this week he went uh visited curvac then uh, not too much came out of that meeting apparently like they just uh, uh reviewing the progress but not much is going to happen until they go through the uh, two phases of clinical trial and then a final review and everything. So I don't know what's the exact timeline on that, but uh, I wouldn't expect to be too soon. Like probably not by the end of the year. That's where most vaccine that I think they're trying to to aim right, like early next year, I think. Yeah, uh, or the beginning of or the the end of this year. Yeah, um, but it's kind of like uh, delivering cars. It's the very very end of the year. <laughs> um, yes, and then uh, Elon had a few visits with. Um, German officials, so several people in Merkel's uh, cabinet, uh, including the uh, economy minister, and uh, they even pledged everything, all assistance necessary for um, for uh, the Gigafactory Berlin. Oop, did I put on the, the wrong uh, link there? Yeah, somehow the wrong the wrong link came up. All right, sorry about that. But yeah, um, so we know that Tesla ran into some issues really with the Gigafactory Berlin. And a lot of people were uh, like skeptical about that. Uh, Tesla had uh, chosen Shanghai with the free trade zone where they thought they were going to be able to, to get things through pretty easy. And, and that was definitely the case. And then more recently, uh, Tesla went to Texas and Elon has been very clear that they are looking they were looking for location where um they would lend them move fast and a lot of, not many people saw um that sub berlin as a location for that um but uh and and sure enough there were some issues uh, in terms of the uh, environmental approval uh, there were some even protests over the derof deforestation effort that tesla needed to do to build a factory some of the water issues too that um a lot of people had concerns with the, the water consumption at the um, at the plant. Uh, also, the deforestation changes the wildlife. So I think there was bats. One <laughs> plant so needed to move a bunch of bats and, and things like that. But it, it went through pretty fast uh, uh, anyway. And uh, now the, the the government is is assuring Tesla that whatever they need is they're gonna, they're gonna get. So that's when the economy minister tells you that. Uh, I think you're in, in sure footing at that point. But then uh, Elon actually visited the site of the factory yesterday. 
and just before visiting the site of the factory he um he gave a, a little talk to to some fans that were outside in the media nothing too groundbreaking he said of course but there was a, a few interesting comments about the um you know, like Elon has been talking a lot about the Model Y. The first vehicle is going to be built at Berlin is going to be better than the Model Y made in the U.S. And, and now, in, in, well, th there's things that are clear about that. Like the, the paint shop, for example, he, he literally said the paint on the Model Y in Berlin is going to be better than the one in the U.S., uh, at least until the update, the fact the paint shop in the U.S. too and, and Fremont factory. Uh, but other than that, it weren't really clear. It said a, a body, a revolutionary b um, body engineering improvement, uh, but without saying what it is exactly. Now, he elaborated on that, saying that it's going to be a core structural change on how uh, they make vehicles. They didn't elaborate fur further, but it's a, it's it's completely basically we're seeing a different way to make cars. Uh, so that's uh, that's quite quite a statement right there. Um, again, didn't elaborate more than that though, so it, it left uh, speculation uh, go ramping, uh, uh, going rampant. And um, my my own theory is that with since since uh, if you link that to the comment about body engineering, yeah, I would assume that it has to do with the the casting, the the bigger casting of the parts. So we already know the like the the, the rear uh, sub frame going from two parts to one parts, but that's already done. That's going to be done in Fremont too. So it's going to be a step further than that. So what's a step further than that? Then maybe like a whole sub frame in one part, or um, the whole body in one part. Even we, we you, if you remember last year, Tesla um, applied for a patent for a giant machine. That has like a four-way casting, basically, and it, it almost looked like you could cast a, a whole a whole car body. You could stem the whole body in once. It sounded pretty crazy, but I mean, yeah. I mean, if, I, if I had to bet, I would I would bet somewhere uh, toward that uh, single. I mean, the Cybertruck is kind of like a you know mm -hmm. exos exoskeleton, so it definitely seems like the way Tesla seems to be going currently. Now, that's a good point. I didn't think about a Cybertruck. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be like an early version of what they're going to do with the Cybertruck. Uh, they just, the they, since they're developing the technology for the Cybertruck, they might just tell themselves, like, hey, we're building a new body manufacturing line for the Model Y. Might as well just use this technology if we figure out it's already so much better than a bunch of casted parts that you weld together and you bolt together and everything. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, if if this is so good and it seems like so obvious at this point, why has another any other auto manufacturer done anything like this? Well, we know how slow they move. Right. <laughs> so they well, once they do something uh, one way and it works, they just keep doing it and in, uh, incremental improvement or or in, in this case, um, I think Elon saying revolutionary might not be too far fetched. I mean, if you're really casting a whole car body at once, it's it, it must be quite impactful on on the entire process. Um, so yeah, I mean, Tesla is known for taking outside the box. That's, that's, that's quite it. So I guess like, let, you know, let's think about some downsides to this. If you get into an accident and, and it's basically one part, like you have to like weld off, you know, the, the broken part and weld on a new part or, you know, what, what's the, pro what's the situation there? Yeah, uh, that's a good point though. At the same time, so one, one, once you get into an accident and affect the body itself, like the insurers are already so quick to just total the car that, uh, right. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, if, if it cannot be like straightened out, it's, it's so quick to be total that, uh, I, I just don't think how big of an issue, but yeah, you're, you're right. It could be a, could be a factor here. Uh, but yeah, after that, um, well, Elon said that he was leaving the same day, but he didn't leave straight to the U.S. He actually stopped by um, uh, Volkswagen. So on his way out of, of um, uh, while he was in near Berlin, uh, he stopped at, uh, at the Brokenheim <laughs> airport. I'm sorry for my German friends. I'm probably murdering that. But it's... Um, it's an airport that's not too far from Volkswagen's uh, headquarters, and apparently it's basically being used as a private airport for for Volkswagen people. So Elon just landed there with his private jet, and um, Hebert uh, Diaz was uh, the the CEO of uh, 
uh, Volkswagen was was waiting for him with an ID3 and an ID4. So apparently Elon got his own little private uh, preview of the uh, of uh, Volkswagen's upcoming two electric cars that are coming with uh, based on the uh, MEB platform. So we don't know anything else about the meeting itself. Apparently, he just he just got a tour of the airport and and those the, the preview of those two cars. But uh, like anything else, it started a big uh, speculation around um, potential partnership between Volkswagen and, and, and Tesla. Um, if you want my opinion, I'm I don't think I think that's that's a stretch at this point. Like Musk and DS seems to be like they, they seem very friendly. Like for a long time, they've been complementary of, e of each other and everything. So uh, like uh, it, it could be just. Hey, I'm going to Germany, and uh, or or um, maybe like Elon saying last weekend I was coming to Germany. Hebert is like, hey, you want to stop by and check out the ID3 and the ID4, and and, and that be it. Like, because uh, uh, because what what can a partnership with Volkswagen look like at this point? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So that's what you have to think about, right? Because first of all, Tesla is worth more than. <laughs> so if, a few years ago, Volkswagen was rumored to be one of the possible partner uh, when when. With Elon's short-lived attempt to to bring Tesla public, uh, private, I should say, and Volkswagen, I think even Hebert said confirmed that he, 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 that was discussed at Volkswagen, but and in the, of course it never happened. And now, now Tesla is worth more than Volkswagen, so forget about Volkswagen buying into Tesla. If anything, it would be the other way around. <laughs> but right. Uh, Good point. So then it lives up. Um, it, it lets maybe the idea of like a supply partnership for batteries or something like that. But then the both companies have like deep ties with other battery suppliers, and they both have their own efforts to build their own battery. Well, at least Tesla is about to announce its own effort to, to build their batteries, and Volkswagen is working with Nordvolt um, on their own Gigafactory. And uh, also, they have a contract on on Nordvolt's um, other Gigafactory. So, um, I I really I really don't see a clear path to. And I know when I posted my article, someone suggested the supercharger. It's like sharing the supercharger, which not impossible, but uh, like so, it needs to be that. So Volkswagen oh. will probably have to invest in the supercharger. Then uh, they already invested in Ionity. In Europe, then and of course they have Electrify America in the U.S. Uh, so I just uh, I don't see that happening either. Yeah, it's hard to imagine any uh, uh, situation where that each they could each offer each other something that would be beneficial. In fact, it's kind of weird that um, Dice showed the model or the ID three and ID four to Musk. I mean, I feel like that's a competitive. You know, you're you're showing the CEO of a company your, you know, bread and butter. Although, frankly, if if Tesla wanted to, I'm sure they could pick one up by now. Yeah, so, or, or in a few weeks or months. So right. it's not that big of a deal. And I, I mean, they also maybe like if you just like drive it a little bit or something like that. Like it, it literally sounded like the whole thing lasted a few hours max. Right. So I don't think they went deep into like the battery pack engineering and whatnot. So, um, I mean, it would be good to see like a. a charging sharing partnership uh mm -hmm. that would be cool uh you know tesla's ramping up their uh their ability to make cars really quickly but they're nowhere near where volkswagen is so maybe mm -hmm. uh you know there's a few assembly lines where tesla could roll roll a few model y's off of a vw line or something um vw doesn't really do trucks maybe a cyber truck is something uh vw is thinking about they could sell them at their dealerships I don't know. You could spitball all day, really, but yeah, it doesn't seem like there's no obvious like mm -hmm. holes in either company's thing. And and yeah. you know they do seem very friendly with each other. Maybe it was yeah, oh, yeah, and that dates back a while too. Like you remember that awkward uh, conversation on stage at the award show where uh, where Elon announced the Berlin Giga factory. Then they were like, you would <laughs> they were like, I don't know if it's uh, I think it's Her Hebert that said. Oh, we talk on the phone uh, regularly, like all the time or something. And then Elon was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the host was like, what do you talk about when you're on the phone? <laughs> and and then Bert was like, oh, well, cars and, and whatnot. Like, yeah, what else? Yeah, it, it was, it was kind of strange. But 
yeah my understanding too like what what leaked out of the of the talk during the take private fiasco is that hebert was pushing for it like hebert was like oh we, we should do this we should do this and, and of course hebert is, on, is ds is on is on the record saying that you think that either tesla or volkswagen are going to be the biggest uh, companies in the world uh, soon enough so like he thought it was a good investment and he, he was right about that i'm I sure mean, that... if you look at the share price now it clearly but clearly apparently the board shut him down at that time so i'm sure yeah. they are uh, biting their fingers now but um yeah well, where i was going with that <laughs> i don't remember where i was going with that um yeah oh no yeah so so in my view Volkswagen and Tesla are the leaders in, in, in electric vehicles right now. They, or, or at least Volkswagen is going to be like the, the way they set things up. They are going to be like uh, the, the they are the the people that take it more seriously after Tesla now. and and really mass producing because everybody else yeah. has an EV, but they're mm -hmm. like you know what are our numbers for the you know next five years? Nothing really. Yeah. Um. But like Volkswagen, Volkswagen is gonna deliver minimum thirty thousand ID three. In the last few months of the year only and might maybe more than that too so just just with the id3 alone that's going to be a big impact and then the id4 is coming at the same time or just a few weeks behind it and uh, then it's just going to roll on for that once they start in china and in, in tennessee in 2022 and, and so forth so what, what it would look like if you have tesla and, and volkswagen partner together like it would be <laughs> it would be nothing left for everybody else like the two the two bigger uh, um ev advocate in the uh, auto industry partnering it would be qu quite impactful like a, i i think they are better off as competitors really i think that that will drive the market more yeah i agree i mean for consumers it's certainly better yeah but for, yeah you're right for consumers um all right moving on the capital raise so for Normally we start out with talking about the Tesla stock. <laughs> now uh, we, we got a good oh we got a good seventeen minutes in before talking about <laughs> about the Tesla stock. So this week was the first week post split, and it started well for Tesla, but then it, it reversed uh, pretty bad, uh, and 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 still up to today. Like today was a wild day on the market, and the reversal started pretty much after on September first when Tesla announced the. Uh, a five billion dollar capital raise, and it's a it's a market price capital raise. So so the, the, they're looking to raise up to five billion dollars um, gradually from by selling share at market price from time to time. So I don't know what time of time frame they're looking for for that, but it's I would assume it's going to be pretty quick, and I would assume that it's already happening, and it's that's what is uh, affecting the the stock price too because Tesla is literally like unloading shares um at a high rate on the market so that would be uh, th th that would of course drive the price down but at five billion dollars and when when tesla announced it they were basically at 500 billion dollar valuation so it's just it's just a one person dilution at that point and now not so much because tesla's dipped below for um 400 billion and today was uh uh it, it closed at um Four hundred and eighteen dollars. So you're short of the four twenty. Unfortunately, oh, what a gonna, nightmare! Gonna have to go the whole weekend without four twenty. Yeah, I mean, it, and it hit the four twenty uh, several times today because that it was a wild ride. If uh, if any of you guys are um, day trading Tesla, it's uh, <laughs> that must be a you need your R trade monitor on on all the way through and make sure you don't uh, get a heart attack in the middle of it. But yeah, so what I don't like about the five billion dollar raise really is uh, the the they're never attaching an actual reason behind it. They, all they say is uh, to straighten the balance sheet. Yeah, that's weak. Yeah, and I, I don't like that. And and the, and that's twice this year alone that they do that. They did two billion earlier this year just to straighten the balance sheet, and now again, all the while they are the. So if you want to do that, and your your goal is to remain uh marginally profitable which appears to still be tesla's goal then it's it's not gonna accelerate anything other than maybe like helping you borrow more money but even then like if you're just borrowing more money it's not like it's not gonna affect that much you're just gonna help a little bit your margin it's not, it's not gonna have that big of an impact um i i would as an investor myself i would have been uh happier with with 
them like, all right, like we the market cap exploded so much that we're gonna raise five billion dollars, and we're gonna use it to build a five like five billion dollars worth of battery manufacturing facilities or something like that, and take a loss doing it because we're gonna spend that money faster than than we're gonna make money. So you, you just you just warn the market right away. We're not going to be profitable the next four quarters because we're going to spend that five billion dollars, and uh, then the, the the cash position, which was a record cash position last quarter, wouldn't have changed. You just you, but you just spend more money. Uh, but Elon seems to be very fixated on that more profit, like being marginally profitable, which which I don't really get because you, you've proven it already. Even though you've proven it with some caveats, like with the Zev credits. The the what the Zev credits? Yeah, the Zev credit is a big one, and now now the European credits too, and everything. So that's that's gonna have a big impact. So I don't know. I don't like the he's really he's sticking to that right now. Um. So so the really the big difference now is just Tesla's gonna have like five billion dollars more in cash position or cash equivalent, and um technically they they are basically uh debt free now if you compare it to cash to their to their debt so that that's that's pretty good but still um I, I want them to be through to the mission and the mission is to accelerate the advent of electric vehicles and I, I think if you spend that money you would accelerate more than if you just hold on to it the only the only thing where it would make a lot of sense and that and it could still be possible is if they are anticipating like a major downturn now if they think the the thing is just the beginning that we're seeing now with the the economic downturns due to the pandemic and and other factors, and the uh, they expect like sales to crash or something, and and the, the, they want to be able to withstand that with a, a bigger balance sheet. So that now would make sense. Um, so, but is is it really what they're expecting? Like, yeah. So I I own five times as many shares as I did last month. So I know a lot about Tesla. <laughs> um, <laughs> First of all, like, didn't Elon say, like, that, you know, this is the last time we're ever going to need to raise cash? Like, well, I said that a few times. So. Yeah, he said that a few times. And but, but I think, to be fair, I think he always put the caveats on this and makes no sense whatsoever. And I, I, I like, I think this is an example. Like, the I, stuck I agree. But if yeah. you're if you're not going to ever raise again, if you're going to mm -hmm. raise again, even with like these caveats, mm -hmm. then don't say that you don't need to raise again because yeah. like, why? I don't know. So. Second, like, um, I agree with you wholeheartedly on the give a reason. Like, the mm -hmm. balance sheet is, you know, very opaque. Obviously, like, they could have said something like, we're going to pay down all of our debts and we're not going to, you know, we're going to go into 2021 debt free or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. That would have been something like everybody could have got mm -hmm. behind. It would have been kind of a rallying cry. Mm -hmm. The, the other option is maybe uh, he's saving the announcement for what he's going to do for battery day, you know? Yeah. I'm not sure that's uh, within the rules of the SEC though. Like if, that's right. You know, like if, because they say like straight on the balance sheet it, I mean, that and like general purpose, like investment. But I, I think if, if it was like to, we're going to build a giant factory, then they would have to said that. Right. That's true. Um, so in that case, like, why why is the balance sheet in such need of uh a 500 billion dollar injection if yeah. they're making profitable cars they're they're they have healthy margins that they've already incorporated all the battery factories that they want to do i mean do they have another big buy they want to make maybe they want to buy a uh, volkswagen <laughs> yeah maybe they want to buy volkswagen or maybe they want to buy like mazda or something you know one yeah. of the really small uh, companies five billion. I don't think buys yeah. Mazda, but um, you know, maybe... Mazda, Mazda's market cap. I'm curious now. Um, that's the least uh, valuable uh, car maker, I think. Big car maker. Uh, like, you know, I, I'm getting the, I'm getting the Japanese uh, like four hundred billion. The, but that's the... <laughs> yeah, oh, four billion. <laughs> four billion. Okay, so they got a billion left over now. They buy <laughs> Mazda. They get rid of all that, uh, although the Miata is quite a nice car. Anyway, uh, you know, those are the options, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't be against that too, like if it makes sense in terms of um, like you got it basically, like you got, the, like, well, you would, you would, uh, 
kill the dealership and the Mazda dealership, though, that would they would take a massive hit because I don't think Tesla wants that or because you know you can't like you're not buying the dealership when you buy Mazda, sure. so you're just like cutting their supply basically, which is ouch. Um, but yeah, I mean, they surely they have a few interesting like manufacturing, fa- but but at the same time, like it seems like Tesla is like done with refurbishing factories, like they just they want to yeah, go new ones. Like so yeah, I don't think that that would happen. I think they like if they use that money, I would have been happy with uh, like this is gonna be the new battery factory, or we we are gonna accelerate Austin or right or something like that. All right, um, Tesla software update uh, that came out last weekend, and it settled uh, I think a big discussion within the Tesla community that the new software now include uh, the visual detection of speed limit signs. So, Which it did in AP1, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have a, a Autopilot version 1, it, it already did that. But version 2, like Tesla was saying, oh, we, we're going to do that. But then it wasn't clear when they're going to do it, if they were already doing it, or if they were just uh, you, basing everything on the GPS data. And um, sometimes I was also confused by it because I would see it change exactly when there's a, 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 a visual sign or uh, misread a sign or something and like the speed limit didn't work. So it was kind of confusing, but now they are saying that they are introducing it right now. So that means that it wasn't the case before uh, on AP2 uh, and up. Now the cameras are going to read the signs and uh, they're going to use that for, for the speed limit data. So not just the GPS anymore. Hopefully it's a, it, it's the use both. And they can like correct the GPS data where they need to, or and vice versa, and um, also like create a um, a database of, of those signs so that uh, it, it can be quicker for their owners to or confirm the the visual data. That would be cool. And um, the other cool thing that was released in the update, it's a green traffic light chime. So if you are at a red light and it turns green. You don't have to have your buddy in the car just go saying you go go come on go like if you didn't see it you're actually gonna get the guy behind you honking oh yeah well that's a, you're not supposed to do that actually uh, so yeah now you get a, a chime that that lets you know so that's cool I always blink my lights <laughs> well that, that's actually less uh, uh, I, I I think in places it's literally illegal to do to, to honk unless it's there's a safety pro- a safety problem. And technically, the light being green, I don't think it's uh, count as a safety pro- uh, issue. Uh, cruise set speed improvement. Now you can quickly adjust the traffic hours, crew control, or auto, steed, so auto steer set speed to the current speed by simply tapping the cluster uh, speedometer. You can still tap the speed limit sign to adjust to the speed limit. Um, so that's cool because otherwise you would just uh, it would shoot up to the preset limit. So now you can just stay at that speed, uh, or you had to adjust with the the scroll. So a little bit easier, maybe save a few seconds, everyone. And that's about it for that update. That update is the twenty twenty dot thirty six, and um, uh, of course, as usual. Tesla gradually pushes the update, so if you don't have it yet, don't panic. I don't have it, but I don't have it either. By the way, I'm getting my um, hardware tree computer next week. Ooh! So I, I have my uh, appointment. They're gonna come. They're gonna give me my. Food They're coming out. Are you going there? They coming to me. Oh, nice. Yeah. So hopefully it's not because I don't have a garage here. So hopefully it's not raining outside or anything, and uh, they can they can uh, update my computer. And hopefully they push the latest software on it as they update it, and I can uh, I can start um, enjoying those new visuals and everything that comes with it. Because uh, you, now it's starting to be worded to have the new computer. Like I bought the FSD package long a long time ago, um, but yeah, the uh, all the new visuals that are coming out, I don't uh, in, don't have access to them right now. The video games will be faster as well. Will they? I don't know. I'm making that up. <laughs> Uh, we should do the sponsor read real quick. Yes. Electrify America. All right. So this episode of the Electric Podcast is brought to you by Electrify America. EA, as we like to call them, is the nation's largest coast-to-coast electric vehicle charging network uh, with stations every 70 miles on average along major highway routes. 
and full of ultra fast 350 kilowatt chargers for capable electric vehicles. They're dedicated to providing electric vehicle drivers with the speed, security, and freedom they deserve. Like freedom from range anxiety, freedom from boredom, freedom uh, as they wait uh, too long for the charge, and of course, the freedom of the open road. Even if that open road is just one nearby, they believe in the electric future just like you. If you're an electric vehicle driver or just wondering what it's like to be one, find out what they're up to at electrifyamerica.com. That's electrifyamerica.com. Electrify America. Hello, freedom. All right. Thank you, Electrify America. Um, by the way, if you have any questions that you would uh, want us to answer, uh, you can put them now in the, the, com the live comment section, and we're going to get to them after a few more new species that we want to discuss. So earlier this week, um, I uh, I was doing some sleuthing on the um, Tesla career page, and I, I found some a few interesting um, job listing, new job listings that show that Tesla is, is uh, building a new software theme really um, out of Austin. So I was looking at all the new jobs in Austin, and of course, so most of them were related to the new Gigafactory. But a few of them, I was like, oh, that, that has nothing to do with Gigafactory. That has used to do with like in-car user interface, a video game, a mobile app, uh, all things that have nothing to do with that. And I was also um, curious because I know that Tesla last year, they started building a similar team uh, out of Washington, uh, uh, Washington, the, the state of Washington, uh, Bellevue, which is next to Seattle, right? Oh, so yeah. Yeah. That's where like Amazon is and Microsoft and all those people. Right. Which makes sense for Tesla to have like a, a space there if you want to try to recruit some of those people. I have some a lot of software expertise. So like Tesla was building a little video game team there to not necessarily to build their own video games, of course, but to like to port uh, to port game to Tesla's um, Tesla Arcade, we call it now. But now they're looking to do the same in Austin. And so whoop. My mouse is going crazy. Um, yeah, so in the job description for a video game engineer job in Austin, Tesla right? Tesla such strive to make its car the most fun possible, bringing video game experiences to the car, help increases that increase that fun. In this incredibly rare opportunity to help build a video game platform, we're looking for a highly motivated software engineer to help enable the best video game content uh, to be available in car. Come put that industry experience to great use and help us build a platform. So I know that Austin has a few video game uh, developers there. Like, a, a, isn't it where um, the Doom people are? I think. Am I mistaken? Uh, I'm not familiar, but I know. You know, there's quite a big software community. Uh, ID software. I, I, I might be confusing with somebody else, but um, yeah, Tesla hired like one of the top guy from Microsoft's video game uh, people. And 343 Industries and, and, and all those those guys uh, to to build that uh, uh, that team, and now they're doing uh, recruiting also out of Austin, and they also want a mobile app developer, a vehicle user interface developer, and uh, so a software and full team and developers. So you can expect Tesla to put some more effort into the in car experience with those new hires, and. Um, and of course, that, that that's becoming like a, a focus for for a lot more people. Try the entire auto industry now that we are moving more and more toward autonomous driving. People want to be ready for when that comes, and the time spent inside the car is going to be completely different. So you want to have a different experience with it. All right, uh, news that I just posted today. Like uh, we had a lot of good news with Tesla this week. This one is not one of them. If you remember, like way back, Tesla wasn't letting you see a used car <laughs> until you actually shouldn't say buy it, but reserved it at least, put a deposit, a non-refundable deposit on it. Um, and we complained about that a few years ago. Tesla ended up changing it and now allowing you to request pictures for a car, so you don't just base uh, base it on the rendered image that they would uh, put on the website. For used cars, of course, it's like it's it's a crazy idea. I don't know why they were doing that. They weren't doing that before, but they changed it. And now they are reverting back to not allowing it. So uh, a Tesla buyer reached out to me today, uh, sharing an email that was sent to him from Tesla saying that effective last night, 
Tesla is no longer posting actual photo of the vehicle and instead are doing stricter guidelines around cosmetic wear uh, and expectation of wear and tear. Please see the following guidelines um, to let uh, and let me know if you have any questions. So yeah, now you ha again, you have to place a non-refundable deposit and even pay transportation fee if the, the, the car is not there because that, that's the main problem here because with Tesla's used car market, the way... Tesla has such a big hold on its used car market because they don't use dealerships. So all the cars are coming back to them unless people are, are, are going through uh, third party sales, which you should always look into, by the way, uh, when, when, if you're selling your Tesla. Sometimes Tesla is not the most generous with their uh, their, re their um, quotes for a resale. And, um, and so you can always go to the store to your local store but then you only you can only see the local inventory there most of the time you're going to want to check look around at other stores and tesla can do that for you and can can ship a car from another place there but they would do that they would normally they would share pictures with you and if you're interested then yeah you place your your deposit and you um you pay the transportation fee and then the car is there but now you have to do that blind um and the only thing that you have now is those new guidelines that I just referenced. Um, they they tell you basically that that's the worst it's gonna get. <laughs> so they do all, again the whole the the mechanical checks, make sure that all the features work and everything, and that's okay. But for the cosmetic stuff, uh, their limit is scratches up to one inch, dents up to half an inch, rock chips. Uh, on unpainted panels and trims, it scratches up to three inches. Mm. Uh, rock chips on glass up to an inch. You, you know how big an inch is on a rock chip on the glass? <laughs> it's, that's big. That's um, like air coming through it. Yeah, it's, that's <laughs> almost like a hole in your in your glass. Uh, it's like the next step is a hole in your windshield. So, so yeah, I, I I completely disagree with that, of course, because <laughs> especially the guy lights like the the guy was like, oh, we have stricter guidelines now. Oh boy, if that's those are stricter guidelines, I want to see the whole ones. Um, yeah, just just like I, I know that Tesla has a lot of power here because again, they have such a great hold on the used car market that they probably have enough demand that they don't don't even care that if if someone like they, they pass on on a sell because of that. But just do the right thing. Just put, put the pictures like any other e car reseller out there. Like they all post the pictures. It's completely normal. Just hire like the handful more people or uh, create a new responsibility for a few. Um, they call it like remarketing guys at Tesla that do the reseller. Or use they, they, they could innovate here and like do a, like a 3D scanner around the car. And so you can like VR yourself into the. You're looking for a job at Tesla set? I am. That's a great. That's a great idea. I got nothing else to do. Yeah, <laughs> do some like virtual reality. Not everyone is getting those you know, Oculus Quest and whatnot. Right. Like, yeah, do it. Get like, in the car. See the see, car. Yeah. See those one inch holes in the windshield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, hopefully, hopefully the Tesla sees that and wakes up and and, and change it because I just I don't understand it at all. All right, uh, Lucid, the Lucid Air, um, they keep releasing like driplets of more information uh, over the last months. They've been doing that, leading to the unveiling that's coming up next week. This, uh, this I is more than a droplet, though. I think. Well, this one is a big one too, for sure, and it was a weird one too because uh, like the, the so I, I need to be careful when I talk about it because on Monday, uh, no, not on Monday, on on Tuesday anyway, earlier this week, I had a preview of the car. But the information about the preview is embargoed. But then they, they did this release, which includes a bunch of information that were embargoed in the preview that I had of the car. So I guess I can talk about that, but I need I cannot talk beyond when they when they release today. Um, so I had to wait until the the ninth when they, they do the full reveal before we can talk about all the uh, innovations here. But what they basically released is the the quarter mile performance, and they released a drag. Um, a drag race with with the uh, latest uh, Tesla Model S performance, and uh, they beat it. Of, of course, I, I had some Tesla fans saying, "Oh, you shouldn't have posted that. The 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 uh, it was fake because the, the the Lucid Air was ahead of the of the Model S here in the drag race, which is of course just an illusion because of the 
of the angle of the camera. And at the end of the day, the Lucid Air did a 9.9 second quarter mile. Do you know a Tesla Model S performance that did 9.9 unless you strip it or something? No, it doesn't. So like, let's just let's just be happy for Lucid here. They did uh, a great job on the performance of the car. And uh, they released some information about how they achieved it to the powertrain. So yeah, they released a picture here of the, um, uh, the, the platform architecture, if you will the drive unit and the inverter and the drive unit and the inverter during the preview and, and with the information they're releasing now that's what i was the, m the most impressed with because it is stunningly small it is super small it's 75 kilograms which is like it's not it's extremely light for 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 what it does really and it's super compact like it literally fits in like a carry-on luggage it's that compact. And I'm talking about the drive unit with the inverter on top. Because the, the, the picture that they share, it's not clear here, but that's that's the drive unit. And the inverter is on top. And then you can see a little bit of the drive unit here. So it's it, it's it comes in one unit. Like I think that's actually like a, the exploded view. You see a little bit of the inverter at the back here. But uh, yeah, that thing delivers uh, 650 horsepower. Crazy. So it's pretty crazy if something that I, I can literally pick up myself like if I, I do some squat with it like i can link it this it's, it's crazy um very impressive they also released like this small image of the wonder box which is the onboard uh bi-directional inverter uh, we, we that information we kind of already knew from the the release a few weeks ago about the charging capacity of the lucid air very impressive charging capacity, but that box and the nine kilowatt onboard charger for level two, and it's also bi-directional. They call it the vehicle to everything instead of vehicle to grid, because it's not just a grid, but it's also like another car, the home, and everything. And finally, you have the um, the battery pack here uh, of the of the Lucid Air, or at least the Lucid Air Dream, which is going to be the first version of the car. And uh, that's about it for what I can say. There's some more interesting things on those elements that weren't released this week, so I'm not going to get into details, but uh, it's impressive stuff. It's impressive stuff. The the, the only thing and, and that's not that impressive is that that car is not coming this year. <laughs> it's it's going to go into volume production next year. So that like it, it if it was out right now, it would be the most impressive electric car on the market today. And of course, everyone is comparing it to the Model S, which is likely going to be the biggest competitor. And for sure, it would be the Model S right now. But is it going to be the, be the Model S next year? Mm, I don't think so. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, was that it? No. Oh, yeah. We have the ID4, too. We're not Elon Musk. We don't get an early preview of the ID4, but we did get interior pictures of it this week. Or today, actually, it was released this morning. And uh, does it remind you anything, Seth? Hmm. Screen in the middle. Uh, clean dash. Yeah, clean, very clean, clean dash. dash. Yeah, uh, I think I, I think it's showing a, a trend that Tesla is is starting to have a, a, an impact on the interior design. And I, if you remember early on with Tesla, people were kind of laughing at the interior design of Tesla. It was like it's just too minimalist. It's, it looks cheap and everything. But I think we are like. The Mac key, in my opinion, also takes cues from Tesla. And of course, if you go to China, then I mean, Neo and Xpeng, they went uh, full on board with, with the, T the Tesla design language for the interior. And I think that's another example. Of course, they, 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 it's not, I mean, it's it's Model 3, Model Y like with the, the screen that's protruding from, from the dash. So that, yeah. that's really much like Model 3, Model S. The very flat dash, like it's, almost that but you do have an instrument cluster so they, they didn't go full tesla with like no instrument cluster but it is a small one it's like a crazy small one though yeah do you know if that's going to have a, a heads up display not aware of it maybe as an option hmm. i'm actually going to test a, a heads up display for for the tesla uh they're supposed to send me one soon coming from china I'm curious to check that out. See How if do you plug worried. it in? You have to plug it into the um, to the system behind the seat. Uh, it, it's it's, it's uh, oh no, it's behind the seat. Or is it through the computer? I'm not sure. One one or the other. Is it Model Three or Model? Model Three, Model Y. Yeah. 
uh yeah the 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 interface thing is behind it's the center console behind behind the center console behind the center console anyway apparently it's not too difficult to install and it's it's a clean enough that it doesn't look crazy because I, I actually I, I do I, I'm completely fine now without um but I did drive my Model S yesterday my parents came here and my parents have my Model S signature and I, I got to drive it uh, I hadn't drive it for a while and I mean I was driving a Model X in, in, in Los Angeles which also have the instrument cluster but now like I was I literally they said they drive my Model 3 and my Model S at the same time so you get you get the, the direct difference and it is fun to have the instruments cluster, especially for for me for the navigation. I think it's like easier to keep looking at the navigation. Yeah, but but I'm fine too without it. Like, so I don't know if I really need an, an heads up display. Um, my whole thing basically is going to be if it's clean enough and doesn't like clash with the design of the Model Three, then yes, I'm going to keep it. If not, I'm going to give it to somebody. <laughs> Yeah, my, so my whole thing with the instrument cluster is I absolutely enjoy it in front of my eyes, but the the flip side is that at night when you just want to drive and you don't you don't want to see any light and mm -hmm. you only have that thing on the side, it's really nice because you're looking right down at the road and like you can there's like nothing between you and the road. You're kind of like just out there. My wife, on the other hand, she was like when we traded our model uh, X. Model X for our Model Y, she was like the one thing that she really didn't like about the idea of trading was the losing the uh, the center screen, and she's dealing with it. In fact, I think she's over it. But yeah, uh, and the Model Y, I would I think too that's I, I didn't have that much time in it, but since you're a little bit higher up too, it's it's cool. Uh, it's even you, you even have more that effect on being like right on the road. Yeah, it's steeper. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, ID4, that's the interior of it now. We already sort of saw the exterior through a leak uh, a few months ago. Uh, the the full car is going to be on the later this month, I think on the 23rd. But um, yeah, it's coming by the end of the year in Europe and uh, in the US. I, I think I um, I got that wrong in the previous uh, podcast. It's going to go into production in the US in 2022, but they're going to ship German ID4 to the US by the end of the year. How many? We don't know, but uh, VW confirmed it to me earlier today. So that's that. We're gonna get that car, which is which is fun to know since uh, it's just gonna be like a few months after Europe get the ID uh, ID3. So we're yeah. not gonna be left behind too much. Though I'm um, again, I don't know about that volume because I'm I'm pretty sure Volkswagen is gonna want to focus on the. Uh, on yeah, the uh, European market, but the, they're going to get the tax credit in the U.S. though, right? Right. Volkswagen hasn't sold mm. enough e-golfs to uh, <laughs> yeah. to uh, cross that threshold. That might be a good deal for some people if you can get that ID4 with the tax credit before it runs out in the U.S. That's uh, I mean, that's going to be a while too. I'm I'm sure they're going to need a few quarters to get to uh, yeah. And then and even and then after that, they still have a, a phase out period where you still get access to, to it. And I'm sure though, at first they're gonna they're gonna try to sell you like the more expensive version of it before, because uh, it's gonna start at around forty thousand dollars. So. Yeah, I mean that's that's a really good car. I wonder like mm -hmm. I wonder if you go to a VW dealer if they're gonna be like a Chevy dealer where they're trying to push you away from the electric cars. I, uh, I mean, VW itself seems to be full, you know, gung ho on electric vehicles, mm -hmm. but the dealers aren't connected to the company at all. Correct. So they could be like, you know, these things are garbage, you know, come look at a Passat, <laughs> you know, or something. Yeah, I don't have any experience with uh, Volkswagen dealers. That's something something to keep an eye on for sure because yeah um, that that's the big problem with every non Tesla company they are so dependent on on the dealership getting on board with with the new EV models so that's one thing that I, I I'm looking forward to see how it plays out for the Mustang Mackie too later this year and then of course when the pickup truck Bonanza is gonna start late next year with the well F F one fifty was delayed until twenty twenty two but yeah. Uh, and I guess Rivian is safe from that, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting. That I think that well, th that's gonna make a difference maybe, since they they're gonna be pushed for the the truck built by Tesla 
under a non-dealership model and then Rivian under a non-dealership model. Then I don't know what Lordstown and, and those those other people are doing, but uh, for, for, for the distribution model, that would be something I should look into. But yeah, they're going to be under more pressure. I think the leadership going to have to get on board. Yeah. All right. Should we jump into some questions? Let's do it. All right. Any news of the 2020 Tesla Roadster from Luke Barat? 2020 Tesla mm -hmm. Roadster. I don't think you can say 2020 anymore. No, I'm probably, probably if they have uh, an official like model year on it at this point, I think 2022. Even yeah. if, if maybe it's going to come out like late 2021. It's, maybe. Yeah. I, it doesn't seem to be a priority. It was kind of like a fun toy to get everybody excited, but actually making them doesn't seem to be anywhere mm -hmm. on Tesla's radar. Um, what, I mean, it's going to have, we know it's going to have the same drivetrain as the, uh, the, uh, the Model S and X, so, or Model S, the new Model S. So that, that might be. Yeah, if the Plaid comes out, then they already developed the Plaid powertrain. Right, but they were always planning to use a different battery pack, like a dual stack battery pack. So unless that changes, uh, they would still need to to bring that to production in order to bring the car to production. So right, and not... then the cold rocket boosters. Yeah, that, that that's another one that you want to test for a while before you give that in the hands of morons like me. Right. All right, Nanda holes uh, allow Monroe set, or Sandy Monroe. I'm assuming said that uh, they're using in-cast Y rear frame. It does not require heat treating. That's interesting. We'll have to check that out. Yeah, I'm not sure what that entails. All right. VW relationship, Tesla capital raise, and Lucid Air. I guess that's what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they corrected our headline because we probably talked about more oh. about the right. potential Volkswagen partnership. Right. and. Uh, so we didn't talk about the oh, yeah. three Pikes Peak crash. Uh, we knew the crash. They ran it again. I don't think they won, but uh, yeah, the well, the both the two Model Three that were racing ended up finishing first and second uh, for the exhibition um, category. So it's it wasn't like groundbreaking or anything, but uh, yeah, it, was, it showed like really Model Three as uh, performance is is performing very well. All right. Uh, Nando Holes again. VW would be a good partner for market penetration in places like India and Brazil. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, with that low price uh, model that they've been kind of throwing around in China, maybe a distribution partner there makes sense. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think the $5 billion stock raise is related to a potential S&P 500 inclusion? Mm, I don't think so. I think they were already eligible by now. And uh, again, Kimball sold a big chunk of stock. I'm assuming. Yeah, well, I think that was a stock option, apparently. So, you don't be surprised if a lot of insiders are, are, are selling right now because you just have to. If they if they have to exercise shares, uh, the 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 capital gain on, on those yeah, shares, the they got to pay the taxes. Yeah, it's so big because of of the. How much it, it, it increased that they're gonna have to, to sell at least some unless they're crazy rich like uh kimball's brother what's his name i can't Kimball. remember <laughs> uh so everybody else is saying 2022 for the roadster makes sense uh rich rebuilds will sell rs7 to buy a cyber truck i think that was related to the mazda maybe um, no i think that's his audi you know audi rs7 yeah oh yeah the rds7 um let's see our our giga berlin in shanghai oh yeah that's sold? something that i forgot yeah, yeah he did that in the same he said that in the same call well he, he alluded that giga berlin i don't think solar i don't think he said solar maybe i should go back and, and listen to that interview again but i think he, he said that uh they might do tesla energy products but uh, i thought it was maybe more talking about power wall or mega packs and, and all that stuff maybe not solar uh well tesla doesn't do solar panels like they don't make their home but uh, solar tiles maybe you know. all right spike z 43 says how necessary are the stock cash raising rounds do we have any tangible evidence of what that has been used for big turnaround from previous stance i think we talked about that a little bit yeah i mean officially it's to straighten the balance sheet and 
Sounds like you're just going to sit on the cash, really. Uh, do we have any insights into production numbers, Tesla, so far in Q3? Nothing really concrete yet. Uh, probably we're going to have more later this month on that, so stay, stay tuned. But uh, everything looking good so far. Like I, I would have heard something if it would have been bad. Just how good it is, I don't know yet. Any news on the rear wheel drive lower priced Model Y from Dave Soley? No, not since last time, no. Uh, any updates on your Model Y? Any new problems or surprises? That's the problem. There is no, there's not anything new to talk about. So I, I did four posts on getting the Model Y, and now I'm kind of like, uh, I'm running out of things to talk about because it's kind of just a car now. But I'll put together a uh, kind of a roundup. We're going up to Vermont again, so I'll have some time to like check out the inside of the car on the way up and and do some stuff. Um, I've took taken it off roading. Wouldn't recommend that. Um, it's it's great for carrying bikes and dogs and kids. Um, the seats have gotten a little dirtier, the white seats, but they clean up pretty nicely. Uh, that's that's all for now, I guess. Mm -hmm. So Luke Barrett, if your father has some uh, news about Giga Giga Berlin, that's that. The news hasn't been disseminated yet. Yet, you know where to get us. Tip at yeah, electric. Send us an email. Yeah. All right, we're coming toward the end here. Uh, what do we think of QuantumScape and the new American Battery Metals Corp recycling plant next to the Gigafactory one? Not redwood materials. So yeah, QuantumScape. That is that the one that uh, uh, the the Bill Gates one. The that they invested in with the nuclear waste. I'm not sure. I, I need I need to research more uh, about that uh, before. I... Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, the more battle battery recycling mm -hmm. companies, the better. Uh, the one next to Gigafactory one uh, seems like uh, maybe Tesla might be helping that one along. I would imagine since they have a lot of. Uh, extra parts coming out of the well a lot of them are opportunist about it too they just like the like let's let's go there since tesla is there too like you, right. know, you, see, you see a lot of that happening i mean re even redwood is is apparently not involved with tesla whatsoever they do get supply from gigafactory nevada but only through the uh panasonic side apparently hmm. have you guys heard about any newer lower priced electric vehicles with reasonable range which brands do you see reaching the large masses price point first so what is the large masses price point okay. yeah that's what i was gonna say like that depends on, on what you say like people are like some people are, are, are always thinking like all right i cannot afford the forty thousand thirty thousand dollar car a car like so i cannot afford an electric car i i mean the average price of any new car sale is is i think over like now thirty four thousand dollars in the u.s so you have right. to take that into account. Like just new cars are more expensive. They are not within reach of the masses. Period. Any new car, whether they're electric or not. So the real, the real masses are going to be reached once you have a very mature used car market, right. which is um, uh, I don't know, maybe like five, six years away. I think. Right. And still, it's going to be tight because there's not. I mean, we're 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 ramping up really quickly, but there's not going to be nearly as many uh, electric vehicles as in, in, internal combustion engine vehicles because and the price of those going to crash too. Right? They're they're going to crash hard. Yeah. All right, we got a few more. The lowest electric vehicle uh, price, I guess, in uh, Europe is the Renault Zoe and the Nissan Leaf, both fine cars. Um, yeah. Oh, have you seen the the little Citroen one, the mini car Citroen that has like the C one or something? Uh, no, I think it's like even it, it's it's uh, oh, it's like it's a, a non car? it's a non -dri driver license car. Like you don't gotcha. need a driver's license for it, and it's it's basically free in some places because it, it's still uh, eligible to the incentives. Right. <laughs> some places after incentive, it's basically free. Uh, but yeah, it's like a forty five kilometers an hour car, so you don't. Uh, it's really just a city car, but right. it makes sense if if you're like just driving around the city, like you can park it in like a a scooter. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. that's great for. I think teenagers are allowed to drive those. Like yeah, four, yeah, yeah, fourteen or something. Yeah, 
Uh, cool. Let's see. All right. If Cybertruck has the ability to supply 220 volt AC powered tools, it should be able to power my house as long as I stay under the rated output. I, I think that's true for any car. Like all mm. you really need is an inverter. Um, but I guess Cybertruck, since it's going to have a built in inverter is, uh, exciting to some people. Yeah. And it's also going to have on average a much larger battery pack capacity. So you're not as scared as draining your car. Oh, we have a nice note from Jose F. Electrek mm -hmm. continues to be a great EV news source, arguably the best. Thanks for your, what you do. Everyone quotes your coverage. That's great. Well, thank you, Jose. Uh, yeah, we answered questions. Luke, come on. Yeah, we just did a bunch of them. Uh, all right, let's see. I'm interested in a rear-wheel drive Model Y now that the used Tesla buying experience is so horrible. All right. So I guess, uh, I, you know, I would say, so Tesla just isn't interested in, in used cars. I, I it's would say focus really. Right. I would just go to like Carvana or any of the other places that sell, I don't know mm. if Carvana does, but like just go to Craigslist or eBay mm. or whatever, um, buy your electric or buy your used car the way, you know, other people buy used cars. You're not going to have, you know, a Tesla warranty or whatever, but you're probably going to get a much better deal anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that actually goes for selling cars too. Like uh, you're not going to get a good price for your car from Tesla. Like I've done that. Um, you know, I got a, I got a quote for my model S and basically I told my friend what the quote was and he was like, I'll give you 3000 more than that right now. <laughs> and I was like, you know, sure. So, and, and yeah, I still you think you hear a lot of that. Yeah. He still got a great deal on it yeah. anyway uh any new new rumors on pricing and availability i'm thinking of model y i don't think i think he hinted at like 45 i think that's what he hinted at right for the rear wheel yeah i think it made sense maybe 46 maybe a little hand up yeah 150 apparently we're gonna hear like very soon the actual price of the lucid air uh and i don't think you're that far off Nenda. yeah and and is it relevant i I think uh, it is because people who want to go a quarter mile in, in under 10 seconds have uh, big pockets. Yeah, that too. I mean, especially like if the the Plaid Model S is probably going to be around around that too, $150,000. Like right. Uh, Monroe needs an ID3, ID4. That would be That'd good. be cool, yeah. I, I'd watch that. That uh, tear down. You can even go to Europe. Europe market isn't designed for Model Y. I kind of disagree there. I think yeah. they'll, they'll. It's not that big. It's not that big of a car. Yeah, it's it's certainly not designed for a Model X. Mm. Um, yeah, of the people agreeing. Mm. Brian, sorry, behind on the show. Maybe Tesla wants to use the money to buy a mine. They they have to say that though. They, yeah. They, if they or say more. that they're gonna use it to strain the balance sheet, they have to use it to strain the balance sheet. They cannot lie to the SEC to official channel that be lying to investors and then they open themselves up for for lawsuits and whatnot. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm no lawyer, but I've seen plenty of law lawyers do that. <laughs> First, if if you make the semblance of a lie through official channel and you're a publicly traded company, you for sure and then there's a lawyer is gonna start the class action against you and. Try to recruit uh, investors. All right. Uh, the best to Lucid. The real question is, will they overcome production roadblocks? And will they be able to sell enough 150,000 cars to transition to mass market products? Excellent I mean, question. That's, that's an excellent question, question for everybody, yeah. really. Yeah. That's. I mean, the to, to Lucid's credit, like they, they stuck their plan for the beginning. So we know, like Faraday, for example, like had to change a plan like several times for the manufacturing of the uh, of the FF ninety one. Uh, Lucid was always planning the same thing for the air, and uh, that Arizona factory they had the deal early on in two thousand seventeen, if I remember, or two thousand eighteen. They just didn't have the money to do it to 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 start construction and everything until uh, last year uh, with the Saudi deal. But uh, now they, they did, and uh, they have a good manufacturing team behind them. They have some people from Tesla, too, that helped Tesla early on. So I, I, I'm not too worried about that. And they have Saudi money behind them, so they're probably going to survive until their next vehicle. Right, or least. the Saudis have something else to invest in. 
All right. Uh, Nanda Holes says, my daughter Melina says hi, 10-year-old Tesla fan. Hey there. There's a lot of young <laughs> Tesla hi. fans out there. Yeah. Hi, Melina. Um, it's uh, it's quite interesting when uh, you know, we go to events or whatever, and the kids know way more about Tesla than the parents <laughs> do. It's like, uh, it's weird, but it's good for Tesla because those kids are going to grow up and, you know, they're going to want to oh, yeah. buy the cars. <laughs> Yeah, yesterday my, my parents parked the car right in front of here and from from my office here i can i can hear on the street my windows open and i i hear this kid is like is that a tesla i've never seen a tesla like that before because it's it's a 2012 one with the newest cone and everything so they are a little bit more rare and the other kid like probably again on like eight to ten years old was like yeah yeah it's an early one they, they changed the front end like some he said something of the, the story like correcting him like yeah it's a tesla and everything i was yeah. surprised all right uh jack ricard uh a legend in ev space died uh so rest in peace to him I, I he used to do those videos where he'd be like sitting down and looking at the chevy volt battery that was that was some good uh watching uh, yeah i mean i used to watch his videos like at two times speed but the i mean the guy was always interesting always crazy yeah, interesting deep Other, it's, it, it, it's sad because he never really took off on youtube because he didn't yeah, like on YouTube, you have to be like you know, energetic and like super fast and like and everything to be super popular. That's probably where we're not that popular on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> we don't we don't do that either. But he was also really slow. But I mean, but his knowledge was second to none, though. So yeah, rest in peace, uh, Jack. All right, Sandy said that the monitor on the Cybertruck is made out of recycled paper. On on, a, can you confirm this? I feel like the whole dashboard was supposed to be recycled or something. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if, if it says like he doesn't have the truck or anything, but uh, I think at the event, the Tesla people, when they were giving test drive, they said something about that. Yeah, uh, Tesla does make its own solar panels. No, uh, it doesn't. I think they have Panasonic, uh, not, any, not anymore, even. I don't think Panasonic makes them anymore. What are they making in uh a... I think they, they, they have like their own oh, like the, the it's not them that make them but they have the they are uh, customized to, to to their spec like they want they want a certain spec and, and they, they buy from that but I don't think they make them like yeah they make their solar tiles not their solar modules that different I thought they were in Buffalo they were making some panels but yeah they were at some point but Panasonic moved everything out of there like they uh, or started to at least like they uh that deal didn't work out yeah. Uh, what's Amprius? I've never heard Amprius, of that. that's the nanotechnology, uh, nanotube, anode battery technology that moved next to Tesla. No, I think Elon uh, denied that. I don't yeah. think he said they're not, they're not involved in, in, in that. Electric already has substantial advantage with lower energy costs and near zero maintenance and made major repair, more money up front, much more cost effective over time. I think those are the advantages of electric vehicles. Yeah. And with that, I think uh we're pretty much done uh one one brian bowl says how many people work for electric is it just you two what's the origin story of electric it's kind of boring but uh <laughs> we have a few other people obviously yeah. mike is and mikey uh do the the bikes and the the uh the, the other podcast the daily podcast yeah uh which is going to be on youtube now by the way if you want to check that out yeah, we'll put some links to that. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's not there yet, but it's going to be there uh, probably next week. Yeah, that should be fun. All right. All right. Thanks a lot for listening, everyone. Thanks a lot for watching on YouTube. You can give us a thumbs up and uh, let's subscribe to see when we are up next time. But it's always for the podcast. It's always the same thing. It's always uh, at 4 Eastern time on Friday. Uh, thank you. If you're listening on audio only on your podcast app, you can give us a subscribe there too. That helps our review. Always appreciated too. That helps up spread the word. And thanks this week to Electrify America for sponsoring the episode too, so that we are we don't make the, this for free anymore. That's nice. <laughs> appreciate it. And appreciate what you're doing to help people charge the world. So see you next time, everyone. Have a good one.